I did my research. I noticed that people say you got to break in your bandsaw blade to make it last. Okay. And cut straight as well to try and stop it so it doesn't uh, go off because your teeth are going in both directions. Like a saw, you know, it's sharp on one side, sharp on the other, then the other, then the other. And if you've got it all crooked or it's only worn on one side, uneven, the blade can start, can wander, that sort of thing. So it's important to have it square and straight and vertical and all perpendicular and perfect. That's number one. And this seems pretty good now. Um, but the, I wanted to visualize breaking in a bandsaw blade. And the there's the analogy of a pencil, which is good. I'll draw the blade. So there's a bandsaw blade. And it has a very sharp tip on it like that. And the next one does as well. When they make them, they're very sharp. They're a lot sharper than they're going to be when you're using it because that tip, it's very much like when you sharpen a pencil in a in an old blade sharpener and you make it so sharp that it's like a, a pin. And you know that that's going to be too sharp to write with because as soon as you start put it down to paper and put a little bit of pressure on it, that tip's going to break off. And when it does, you're left with a something like that. You're left with a jagged bit. And that's where you then start, you start writing with that. And now, if instead of just putting the pencil down and snapping it, if instead you had very carefully sort of moved the tip around on, a piece, on the paper like this and just worn it down slightly, instead of breaking off further down, you might instead have simply caused it to round off further along like that somewhere and give you a nice point. And it's at the point where it has enough strength to not break because you haven't snapped it, but that super sharp bit is gone. And that's where you want it to be. So you're getting as much of the sharpness as possible. Whereas if you snapped it off, you'd end up with a, with a bad break further down. And so that's what we're trying to do with breaking in the blade is wear, the tape, wear those tips down carefully and slowly and just get them down, to, down a little bit. And if you do that right, then your blade will last a long time and give you nice cuts. And so that's what you do. Now, uh, I looked all over the place. The recommendations are to do things like, if you're cutting with steel, you should drop your speed by 25% and then take the weight off by 25 to 50% of what you're normally expecting to use. Well, I don't know what we're expecting to use. All I know is that in the manual, it's got for mild steel, which is what I'm doing it with. We're looking at 30, speed 30, 30 whatevers um, for mild steel. And then you can go down to 20 for stainless um, or up to 50 for soft materials. So I dug around a bit further and on, on Frank Hoos's site on Little Machine Shop, he's got a PDF here about this. Sorry about all that flickering. Just another problem with cameras. I'm so over these cameras. Uh, and this is all about s speeds and so on. Uh, teeth per inch. But when you get down to the bandsaw blade break-in procedure proper break-in of a bimetal blade assures longer longer blade life faster cuts for a longer period and consistent performance run the normal feet per minute and now the point is that he's writing this about one of these one of these four by six bandsaws so it's applicable to this um, adjust the feed pressure to about one half the normal rate for the first few cuts and then after that, sort of increase to the normal cutting rate. So what he's saying, because you can't really just adjust these, um, you can go down to half. But what he's saying is just leave it on the speed that you intend to use, which in this case is the 30 or 29. And uh, just reduce the speed, reduce the pressure on it, reduce the cutting pressure. And so that's what I did. And I let it cut through this um, one inch square of um, mild steel. That was my first cut of a piece like that. 
and uh, I let it go for about four minutes or so. And I just uh, I gave it a little bit of lube as it went down and uh, just controlled its drop. And after about the quarter of an inch, I actually just let it go at its own speed because it was going quite slowly. And I have set this tension spring to all the way so it's as light as possible. It's not that light, but it seemed light for this purpose because it's quite a big piece of uh, metal there. If it was a vertical fin piece, I couldn't have done that. But uh, because it's an inch worth of steel there, yes, it was fine. And so I did it like that. And the cut came back looking very nice. Um, let's see now. So this side is the cut made by the people who sold me this piece of steel. So the big steel company. And then on the other side, here's the cut I made with the bandsaw here. Quite frankly, I mean, they're different. This looks like it's got a, a rougher blade, um, whereas mine looks nice and fine. So very happy with that cut. Very good. And I will keep doing that. I'll just watch the pressure as I go down and I'll use a bit of lube as I go down for the next however many cuts. Okay. So that went well.